Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson, and I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower, and we use words and phrases, especially written for people learning English. Today, Brian Lynn has a report on fertility treatment laws facing single women in Taiwan. Anna Mateo and Katie Weaver present this week's education report, and Phil Deerking and Dorothy Gundy take us on a journey to Olympic National Park. But first, some single women in Taiwan. Are medically freezing their eggs, although they cannot currently use them to have children unless they marry. The women say they want to make sure they have usable eggs stored, in case the island's government changes its current law. Taiwanese law currently permits single women to freeze their eggs. But it is only legal for them to use those eggs if they marry a man. Self-ruled Taiwan has a fertility rate of 0.89 children per woman. That is less than half of the replacement rate of 2.1 necessary to prevent decreasing population. It is also one of the world's lowest rates, following South Korea and Hong Kong. Doctors in Taiwan say the law has led to about eight percent of women using their frozen eggs. This compares to about thirty-eight percent of women in the United States. Vivian. Tung is a 33-year-old Taiwanese marketing director. She injects herself with a drug daily over a two-week period, which was part of the process needed to freeze her eggs. The drug Recovel is a hormonal medicine used to improve egg production. Tung is one of a rising number of Taiwanese women who are choosing to freeze their eggs so that later in life they can become pregnant and have a child. It's my insurance policy, she told the Associated Press. She explained that many women in Taiwan are independent, career-centered, and not necessarily looking for a husband. To have children with, my family is very supportive and respect my choice. When they hear that I buy insurance for myself, they also feel very good. Tung said. Taiwan became the first place in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage in 2019. In May, the island's government gave same-sex partners the right to jointly adopt a child. Records show that only about four percent of children in Taiwan are born out of wedlock, or born to parents who are not married. This compares with about forty percent of children in the United States. Demand for egg freezing in Taiwan has risen sharply in recent years. A study carried out by National Taiwan University Hospital showed that over the past three years, the number of women aged 35 to 39 who froze their eggs was up 86 percent. More than 12 centers offering egg freezing services opened in Taiwan in the year following the COVID-19 pandemic, said Dr. Lai Singhua. He is founder of Taiwan's first egg bank, the Stork Fertility Clinic. Lai said the fertility centers in Taipei. 
and Shinshu have reported a 50% increase in patients from the year before. As a result, the centers have frozen the eggs of more than 800 women. I'm Brian Lin. Next, Anna Mateo and Katie Weaver present the next part of Learning English's Early Literacy Series. This week, they talk about phonics. Anna joins me now to talk a bit about today's topic. Hi, Anna. Thanks for being here. Hello, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Anna, what can you tell us about phonics? First of all, it is important to know that phonics is the relationship between letters of the written language and sounds of the spoken language. And what is the goal of phonics? Great question, Ashley. The goal of phonics is to help students learn how to use the alphabet to read and write. What can teachers or parents do to help a student learn phonics? Teachers or parents can help students with fun activities that play around with alphabet letters and sounds. Teachers should also teach phonics in a very clear, direct way. Teachers should also not teach the alphabet in order from A to Z. Many teachers often start with the letters S, A, T, I, P, N. Why? Well, these letters make more three-letter words than any other six letters. The article talks about other teaching tips, too. Great. Thanks, Anna, for those suggestions. You're welcome, Ashley. Now, let's learn more about letter-sound connection. Phonics is where written language meets spoken language. Phonics teaches students the relationship between the letters of written language and the sounds of spoken language. The goal of phonics is to help students learn how to use the alphabet to read and write words. It also helps them understand writing. Teaching Tips for Phonics Effective phonics instruction should include letter shapes and names. Work with each separate sound in a word. Include all major letter-sound relationships. Teaching Tips for Phonics Teach phonics in a clear and direct way with a plan. When you teach letter-sound relationships, tell your students the goal of the lesson. Explain the learning strategies you plan to use. After you teach something, such as words or spelling patterns, plan to use them often with your students. Use them in sentences, songs, or poems. Play games with them. Read texts and stories using words or letters. Practice writing them. Teach the ABCs. Singing the ABC song is a great place to start. As you say each letter, point to it. This will help teach the connection between letters and sounds. Have them write letters early and often. However, do not teach the alphabet in order from A to Z. 
It is fine to say or sing the full alphabet in order. However, when you begin teaching individual letters, experts advise against teaching them in order. Teachers often start with this group of letters: S A T I P N. They make more three-letter words than any other six letters. Have them write letters early and often. Teach commonly confused letters or sounds separately. Some English language learners confuse some letters. If that is the case with your students, teach them separately. Let the students master one letter sound before moving to a similar one. Some commonly confused letters are B, D, P, E, I, M, N, T, D. If a sound is written more than one way, teach the different spellings one at a time. For example, the long a sound can be spelled several different ways. Try teaching its forms in order. First, a i, as in train. Next, a blank e, as in gate. Then, a y, as in day. Finally, use them together in a game or activity. Teach short vowel sounds first. Words with short vowel sounds are usually easier to say and spell. At this stage, teach single beat syllable words with short vowel sounds, like sat and pat. However, short vowel sounds can be confusing, so teach them separately. Teach easy and common consonant letter sounds first. Some consonants are easier than others. Usually, consonants that you can stretch out are easier to say. Letters like m, s, and f. With some consonant combinations, you can hear each letter, such as f l, fl. S P sp, T R tr, and S T st. These are called blends. In the video for this article, you can hear them all. Teach these with short vowel sounds. For example, flap, spin, trim, step. With some consonant combinations, the consonants become one sound, such as the sh in sheep. These are called digraphs. Teach common consonant combinations like ch, ch, sh, sh, and th, th. But keep in mind. Some students may have a hard time with these. For all of these suggestions, teachers must decide which sounds are easiest for their students. Learning strategies for teaching phonics. Learning strategy: Use all the senses. Let the students see your face and mouth make the sounds. Use a mirror so the students can see their own mouths make sounds. Have students touch their throats and say letter sounds. Some letters move the throat. Some letters do not move the throat. Put a tissue in front of your face and show how some sounds make the tissue move. 
while others do not. Have students draw letters with their fingers while saying them. Students can draw letters in materials like sand or paint. Students can also build letters with their bodies. Put students in groups. Give them a letter or they can pick a letter. Then they make the letter with their bodies. Learning Strategy Alphabet Matching Young learners are just beginning to understand that there are relationships between written letters and spoken sounds. They are also learning that these relationships follow rules. They are learning the alphabetic principle. Teachers can help students develop this understanding with fun activities that play with alphabet letters and sounds. For example, games that match lowercase and uppercase letters. Assessment for Phonics Ask students questions about lesson material. Some assessments will be spoken and some will be written. Sample Questions what sound do the letters S and H make when you put them together? How do you spell the SH sound? How do I turn the word BIT into BITE? Ask students to pick out the following in a text. Uppercase and lowercase letters. Consonant sounds and letters long vowel sounds and letters, short vowel sounds and letters. Read short vowel sounds in consonant-vowel-consonant -consonant words. Mat, cat, bag, bat. Read consonant combinations with short vowels. Flag, trim, brag. Read long vowel spellings. Long A sound spelled A I, A Y, A blank E. Long E sound spelled E E. Read words with many syllables. Treehouse, rainbow, book bag, syllable. Use these tips, strategies, and assessment methods that best serve you and your learners. Change them to fit your students and teaching situation. I'm Ana Mateo. And I'm Katie Weaver. has launched a new program for children. It is called Let's Learn English with Anna. The new course aims to teach children American English through asking and answering questions and experiencing fun situations. For more information, visit our website, learningenglish.voanews.com. This week in our National Parks journey, we explore a vast area with mountains, beaches, forests, and glaciers. The area's huge range in both rainfall and elevation make it one of the most diverse parks in America. Welcome to Olympic National Park. The park is located in the western state of Washington. It is on the Olympic Peninsula in the northwest part of the state. The park covers more than 400,000 hectares. 
It has several different ecosystems. Visitors will find temperate rainforests, glacier covered mountains, and almost 120 kilometers of wild coastline. The Olympic Peninsula has seen travelers from many countries throughout history, including Mexico, Spain, France, Russia, and England. Many travelers from these countries arrived in the late 1700s. They were searching for the Northwest Passage. The sea route connects the northern Atlantic and Pacific Oceans by way of the Arctic Ocean. These explorers all claimed to discover different parts of what is now Olympic. National Park. In 1792, English Captain George Vancouver explored the peninsula in great detail by boat. He named many of the natural features in the area. Later, people began moving west across North America to search for gold. This era was known as The Gold Rush. Many people came to the western United States in search of gold. At the time, the Olympic Peninsula was not very developed and did not have roads. People had to travel by boat or horse to explore the peninsula. Early settlers reached the Olympic Peninsula in the mid 1800s. At first, people built homes on the coast. This area was easier to access and had good land for farming. Life on the Olympic Peninsula was difficult, however. People lived far from large cities and resources. They cut trees to build cabins. They also hunted and fished for food. Later, people started making expeditions into the center of the peninsula. They explored its forests and mountains. These areas never became very populated, however. To protect the nature of the area, President Grover Cleveland declared the Olympic Peninsula's forests as the Olympic Forest Reserve in 1897. And in 1938, President Franklin Roosevelt signed the bill that established the Olympic National Park. Eight Native American tribes are closely connected to the area. One tribe, the Makah, has a long history. Of whaling. The U.S. bans whaling, but the Makah tribe is permitted to continue practicing this tradition in small amounts. American courts also gave Native American tribes the right to continue their traditional fishing practices in the area. Protecting fish resources. Is important to the Native Americans living on the Olympic Peninsula. They work with the National Park Service to protect the area's natural resources. Olympic National Park has meadows and lakes. It has glacier fed rivers and mountain peaks that rise more than 2,300 meters. Each area of the park offers visitors something special. The Elwha Valley is in the central part of the park. It is the Olympic Peninsula's largest watershed. A watershed is an area of land that separates waters that flow to different rivers or seas. Long ago, The rivers in this area held the most salmon outside of Alaska. The area also was home to bears, eagles, cougars, and the Klallam Native Americans. 
In the 1920s, a growing community of settlers built two hydroelectric dams to provide energy for the local economy. The dams created many problems for the river. They decreased the water in the rivers, which caused the fish population in the area to decrease. This affected the other animals that depended on fish for food. The community later decided to fix these problems. In 1992, Congress passed the Elwha River Ecosystem and Fisheries Restoration Act. Both dams have been removed, and the National Park Service is using fish hatcheries to increase the salmon population. Today, the Elwha River is the site of one of the largest ecosystem restoration projects in National Park Service history. The Hull River is on the west side of the park. The river is formed from melted glacial ice on top of Mount Olympus. The river is 80 kilometers long. It empties into the Pacific Ocean. The area receives about 400 centimeters of rain each year. It is a temperate rainforest. Because of the amount of rain, many different types of plants grow in the Ho rainforest. From mosses and ferns to huge Sitka spruce trees, The Ho River Valley is protected from any logging or development. Hurricane Ridge is a mountain area in the northern part of the park. It is easy to enter and provides incredible views of the Olympic Mountains. The ridge has many hiking paths. In winter, people come here to ski. They also come here to take part in other fun winter activities like sledding and snowboarding. Hurricane Ridge usually has snow from December through the end of March. Visitors must be prepared for icy roads and severe weather. The westernmost part of the park is Pacific Coastline. Olympic National Park has many breathtaking beaches. Rialto Beach is known for its tall sea stacks. These formations are tall towers of rock standing in the sea. North of Rialto Beach is Hole in the Wall. It is a natural arch. That has been carved by the powerful sea. Clay Lake Beach is known for its white sand. It also has three national wildlife refuges, which protect the area's bird and fish species. The coastline areas offer hiking and camping. They are some of the most popular places in the park. Olympic National Park offers difficult mountain hikes. It offers relaxing beaches and exciting walks through lush rainforests. There is truly something for everyone at Olympic National Park. I'm Dorothy Gundy, and I'm Phil Deerking. That's our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson, and I'm Dan Novak.